Today we're talking about things, mostly camera gear, that beginner photographers actually need. The first one, obviously, will be a camera. Get a camera body and lens that's within your budget that you can actually afford and still does the job. And I would highly recommend getting an interchangeable lens camera too if you can or any camera that has different focal lengths that you can play around with. This could be a phone or even a compact camera. Basically any camera that you can zoom in or zoom out with. This way you'll be able to enjoy photography more. And the more fun it is, the more hopefully it'll motivate you to take more photos. Another big reason why I would recommend to start with the zoom lens is so that you can recognize the kind of photography that you're more interested into and really recognize which focal lengths that you like the most. I personally actually started with the Canon Rebel XS and I'm not sure if they still make that. But the next one I would recommend if you don't want to spend too much money into a camera, like an actual camera first, I would look into like a second hand Canon T3i. It's got all the basic photography features in there and you can also play around with video functions as well if you want. And used Canon T3i will probably set you back around like 200 bucks. But if you have a bigger budget or you know for sure that photography is something that you're very very interested in and would love to invest the time and money into in the future, there are tons of different great options to choose from and I'll leave a couple of them down in the description if you're interested. As for lens selection, I would recommend getting a zoom lens like I briefly mentioned earlier. And when you're first starting out, don't pay too much attention on the megapixel or how fast the burst rate is. I wouldn't worry too much about those numbers at first, but instead I would focus more on camera settings like shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. And really try to understand how these three camera settings can affect the photos that you take. But most importantly, it's just to have fun and take more photos as you go. I would say that's the most important part when you first get your camera. I would even start with just the kit lens if that's an option so you can get your feet wet. Some of the kit lens are actually very well made and very capable nowadays. But like everything else in life, the more you play with it, the more photos you take with it, eventually it'll start to get boring. So I would suggest getting a 50 millimeter prime lens as your second lens. A prime lens is basically the opposite of a zoom lens. So essentially you have to zoom in with your feet by walking closer to your subject or walking away from the subject. This way you will learn a lot more about composition. And at the same time, it'll really make you think about the photos that you're taking. However, if you're disciplined enough, you can achieve the same effect by just sticking to the 50 millimeter on your kit lens. Because most likely your kit lens will cover the 50 millimeter focal length. And if you can do that, try to challenge yourself to do the same thing with different focal length on your kit lens. You can do it with the 18 or 28 millimeter or even the 35 millimeter. I will also try out the 40 millimeter. So what you can actually do is to restrict your focal length for a certain period of time. This could be a day or two or even a week and just try to shoot anything that you see interesting with that certain focal length. This will really jumpstart the creativity inside of you. You'll be able to figure out which focal length is your favorite. Now, the advantage of getting a prime lens is that most likely it'll produce sharper image compared to the kit lens that you got. And on top of that, it'll do a fantastic job in low light situations because it opens up so much wider for the lights to get in. Therefore, it's a great way to separate your subject from the background. So if you figure out which focal length you like the best, I recommend getting a prime lens as your second lens. It obviously doesn't have to be the 50 millimeter all the time. It is the standard, but I would suggest getting maybe like the 35 or 40 if that's what you're into or even the 28 millimeter. That one could be a bit hard to start at first, but once you're used to it and you know what you're doing, you will still be able to produce great images. But I will also look into the 24 millimeter or the 35 millimeter prime lens. The kit lens that you got at first will most likely cover all these three prime lens focal lengths. So definitely give it a try on your kit lens first and see which focal lengths you liked the best. And trust me, getting a prime lens is so much worth it. Another type of lens that you could look into will be the telephoto lens because it gives you that reach 
that you normally wouldn't be able to get with the kit lens. This way it gives you a totally different ways on how you compose your photos. And depending on which telephoto lens that you get, it'll most likely not do as well as the prime lens in low light situations. But due to its nature, you'll be able to really separate your subject from the background, which gives you a totally different kind of experience on photos. There are tons of lens selections that you can choose from, regardless of the camera system that you decide to go with. But always remember that you don't have to get the most expensive prime lens or the most expensive telephoto lens, especially when you're just starting out. Being able to enjoy taking photos and having lots of fun while doing so is far more important than spending a lot of money on a lens because eventually you'll figure out which focal length that suits best for your shooting style. The next essential item that you'll need would be a memory card. If you choose a film camera, you'll need to get a film. If you choose a digital camera, even if it has an internal memory, which I really think most of the camera should have, like the Ricoh. But either way, you'll need extra storage, so a memory card is a must get. There are many different types of memory cards out there, but the most common one would be SD cards. You want to make sure that you get the correct type of card for your particular camera. And you can usually find this online. There should be an official website or web page showing that which type of memory card it fits and it'll recommend a couple of them. So this way you won't go wrong with any of the recommended memory card. One thing I want to add here is that don't get the largest SD card that you can find or you can afford Forward, try to break it down into maybe like a couple 32 gigabytes or maybe a couple 64s. This way, whenever you're going out to take photos for any sort of occasions, if one of the memory card fails or gets corrupted, you'll still have multiple other ones that you can use or at least all of your photos won't be just on that one memory card. Now, the next thing I want to focus on is how to carry your camera. Obviously, you don't necessarily have to get a camera bag when you're just starting out. But the biggest takeaway here is to minimize the chance that you get lazy and not wanting to take your camera out everywhere with you all the time. By having the camera at the very bottom of your bag will most definitely stop you from getting the camera out to take photos. Trust me, been there, done that. At the end of the day, it's just me carrying a whole bunch of camera gears, well maybe not that much, but they're all just at the bottom of my bag. I have them on site and I'm not using them to take photos because it was just hard to get it. It's all the way at the bottom. I had to like go dig inside and try to grab it out. And I know, excuses, excuses. And at the end, it's just extra weight on your bag, which is not fun at all. So what I would suggest is to get some sort of camera inserts that you can put inside your bag in order to separate the compartment from your camera and all the other things that you have in your bag. This way it's easy easier access for you to find the camera and it's easier for you to just grab and take it out and take photos. Or get an affordable camera bag that can double as a day bag for everyday use. Basically anything that will give you fast and easy access to your camera will do the trick here. Because the point here is to shoot lots of photos and we're trying to get rid of all the obstacles that's in our way of using our camera. Another gear that helps with this is a camera strap, which I'm not really a big fan of. But it does do the job and a lot of people use them. Having a comfortable camera straps gives you the ability to free up your hands whenever you're not taking photos at the moment. Because you have the camera around your neck all the time, you can access your camera really quickly whenever you want. Whenever you see a shot that you want to take, you can just capture it real quick. Still, I'm not a big fan of it, but Give it a try, maybe you'll like it. You can also go with the camera clip, like the Peak Design Capture, where you can install it on either the shoulder strap or even on your belt. So this way you can kind of lock in your camera on the shoulder strap or just put on your belt and unlock it whenever you need to take photos. I personally like to keep the camera on the shoulder strap with the camera clip. But whenever I'm taking photos, I'll try to keep the camera in my hand like most of the time and only use the camera clip whenever I absolutely need to have my hands free at the moment. If not, I prefer to have the camera in my hands like at all cost, which leaves you more chances of using the camera and this way you don't miss a shot. And at the same time, the more photos you take, the higher chance you'll be able to get some good shots. And getting more photos and good photos will hopefully and eventually motivate you to take more photos and be more interested in photography. Now the last thing that you need 
is actually not a camera gear. And that is to take a lot of photos. In order to get better photos, and you probably noticed this already, most of the camera gear that we talked about today are essentially different ways to facilitate and motivate us to take more photos. As you take more photos, you'll get used to how the camera functions and really understand the basic of camera settings, such as the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Once you understand these three camera settings, you can basically shoot with any kind of camera. And at the same time, you'll be able to achieve and capture the shot that you have in mind. 